Hey, what's up? It's your boy, Vani Hudson with securityplusPro.com. And welcome to my YouTube channel if you're watching it on YouTube or to my website, securityplusPro.com if you're watching it there. Uh, in the last video, we went through downloading Kali Linux. And we're going through this entire series on setting up a penetration testing slash hacking lab so that we can get some hands-on experience with the Security Plus exam, because I want you to pass it. And by the way, even, <coughs> excuse me, even if you're not uh, studying for the Security Plus exam, this stuff is still awesome. You can use this for other tests too, like the, the GCIH, or that's the uh, GIAC Certified Incident Handler. You can use it for the GPEN, the GIAC Penetration Testing Certs. So this has a wide application. And just for your own enjoyment, you can also use it for that. So anyway, with that nice little overture, today I'm gonna to show you how to actually install Kali Linux. I've done this so many times, and because I've done it so many times, there's a tendency to, to sort of just think it's easy for everybody, right? And it's not. The first time I did this, it was really difficult. So I really wanna take my time and carefully show you how to install Kali Linux. We're doing this in our, uh, our VMware Type 2 hypervisor. If you haven't seen the videos in that, make sure you go back and look at that. And we're gonna keep going through this series. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to actually configure Kali Linux to make it look really, really awesome. It's a really fun video. We're gonna personalize it. And then I'm gonna show you how to install Windows 10 Enterprise Edition in your VMware environment, okay? So here we are at the VMware uh, setup screen for Kali Linux. This is where we left off in the last video. So I'm gonna go ahead and click X on this little thing down here because it gets in the way. And I'm gonna go to the graphical install, okay? So you might notice the resolution kind of sucks right now. The, when the first time you do this, the resolution isn't great. Don't worry, in the next video, I'm gonna show you, this is part of the personalization tips. I'm gonna show you how to make it full HD and how to do a bunch of other cool stuff. Okay, so anyway, I'm gonna pick my language. I'm English, obviously, I'm in the United States, and I am using an English keyboard. The next thing it's gonna do is gonna to try to um, load different components from the CD, the CD, right? So that's what we're doing. We're, we virtualized the system. Kali Linux thinks we're installing it from a CD. It doesn't realize it's really coming from an ISO. It's coming from a file. That's part of the beauty of virtualization, okay? So it's gonna go through and detect some um, network configuration stuff, and let's just let it go through the process and then I'll come back to you when it's done. All right, so host name is the first thing to set up. Um, the first thing I like, I actually like to change the host name to something else because you know, I don't want people knowing that I've got a, a version of Kali Linux running on the network. So I'm just gonna change mine to workstation K. So WS for workstation, K for Kali, and I'm just gonna say two. Just something different besides the defaults. I'm gonna click continue. Domain name, I'm gonna leave that blank. And now I'm gonna create a root password. I'm gonna say show password in the clear. I'm just gonna make mine password dash one, two, three, bang, and do the same thing here. By the way, you just click show password in the clear in order so you can see that they match. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to pick something more secure than that. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna click Eastern time zone and then we're gonna go ahead and let it detect the disks. The, the disks, again, it's not really a disk. It thinks it's installing on a hard drive, but it's installing it on a file, which is virtualized as a hard drive, right? So we're gonna go ahead and use the entire disk. So I'm gonna click next and I'm gonna click continue. And then I want to have all files in the same partition. And I'm just gonna go ahead and finish. So by the way, before I do that, let me just show you what this is doing. It's saying we've got two partitions, a primary and a logical. The primary is the main partition. That's, this forward slash means it's the root partition and we're, it's, it's basically 20 gigabytes. And then we have one logical partition called swap. That is a, it's not a physical partition, it's a logical partition. That's just so that Kali Linux knows where it can temporarily store the contents of memory when your hard drive fills up. So it's a swap drive. It's a way that it can still continue to run um, when you run out of memory. So, you know, you only have so much RAM on your machine, right? And when you run out of memory, when you peg it, when you hit that limit, the computer can either crash or it can start to write some of that memory to a swap partition. And that's the whole purpose of the swap partition. Okay, so we're good there. Let's go ahead and say finish partitioning and write changes to disk. And yes, we want to write the changes. It's just saying, are you sure you want to do this? Yes, we do. And remember, we're partitioning the VM, not our physical machine. We're partitioning the guest OS, not the host OS. Okay, there's the two differences, um, just so you know. And if this lingo confuses you, go back to my blog at securityplusprocom forward slash blog, 
And uh, you can read on virtualization and exactly what the host and the guest and the hypervisor, type one, type two, and all this stuff means. You need to know for the exam, so I really encourage you to look at that. So we're gonna go ahead and let this copy to disk. When it finishes, I'll come back and we'll pick up from there. Okay, we're back. So it actually took exactly five minutes for me to install it, I counted. I stared at the progress bar. Now, if it took a lot longer for you, that could mean that your processor isn't as fast, but typically it's a function of your hard drive. So I actually replaced my standard hard drive with a solid state drive. By the way, I just wanna show you the one that I've been using um, really quick. So I've been using this Samsung one terabyte solid state drive. Now it's kind of expensive, you can see the price listed there, but it's been a huge improvement to you know, my system. And when you've got all these VMs running on your computer, you really wanna make sure you have the fastest drive because it just makes your life a lot easier. So if you're interested in buying this one, I would encourage you to go through my affiliate link. If you click that link, I will receive a commission. So I will save like a small cut from that, but it's a great way you can help me out and uh, you know, a great way that you can ensure that I continue to produce this content for you. So that affiliate link is right there and that's how you can help me out. All right, so anyway, let's go ahead and finish our installation. So we're gonna say, use a network mirror. We're gonna do that, click next. We're not gonna use an HTTP proxy and then we're gonna continue through the process. So uh, once this finishes, there'll be a few more things that we, a few more loose ends to wrap up and then we're uh, basically gonna be able to wrap this up. Okay, I'm back, that took 10 seconds. <laughs> All right, so now we are back here. We're going to install Grub. This is the Grand Unified Bootloader. Uh, this is what Linux uses for the boot up process. So we're gonna install Grub. We're going to put it on Dev SDA. Dev, there's a folder on Linux called Dev. That's short for devices. And SDA, is stored, it's short for storage device, and A is the first partition of that storage device. Okay, so that's where we wanna install it. Don't worry, if this, if this stuff is complicated, we're gonna dig into the basics of Linux and all that cool stuff a little later. It took me a while to get this. I was like, dev, what the heck is dev? Is that talking about developer? <laughs> what is a dev? It's a device, okay? So we're gonna let this installer finish, and again, I'll cut the video. I don't want you to sit here looking at this, and I'll come back once we're done. Again, I'm back, it took two seconds. I'm not exaggerating. Okay, so now we are going to click continue, and maybe I shouldn't pause the video because maybe it'll be done before I finish blabbering. Uh, but this is gonna go ahead and uh, finish the installation process and then we'll be good to go. I'll pause the video here and I'll let you know uh, how long it took. Okay, we are back. That took one minute exactly. And now we're booting into the operating system. So I'm not gonna get into the details of this. So what we're gonna do next in the next video, because this video is already getting kind of lengthy, is I'm gonna show you how to log in and we are going to configure the, you know, the, the environment. I'm gonna show you how to make it look really elite. It's gonna look really cool. I'm gonna show you how to you know, update it and you know, make sure that the resolution is good. All that stuff is coming up in the next video. You don't wanna miss it. And if you enjoyed this video, if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, make sure you click subscribe, thumb it up, leave a comment. I wanna hear from you. If you're looking at this on my blog, securityplusprocom forward slash blog, make sure you scroll down and enter your email address in at the bottom where you can subscribe to our newsletter. You'll get you know, free updates. You'll get more content like this delivered directly to your inbox and a bunch of other goodies that I don't share in any other uh, medium. So you definitely wanna hook uh, into your email address there and get plugged in. Okay, so again, thank you so much for spending the time with me. I hope this video has been useful to you and I will see you next time where we log into Kali Linux and we start pimping it out. <laughs> All right, I'll see you then, peace.